Our instinct says exclude, block them. Encountering Jesus will turn us around and say include, welcome. And in the story of Elijah in the uh, Hebrew scripture today, again, God sent Elijah to a widow with a child. And things are so bad economically, and some of us kind of see some of that in the last four years in this country. Things were so bad that this woman had a little flour left in the jar and a little oil. That was going to be, she was collecting sticks, and that was going to be her last meal with her son. They were going to cook what's left, what little they have left, eat the last meal, and die. That's how bad things were. Okay? And Elijah says what? <laughs> Feed me first. And God sent me to do this. Feed me first. And then you can have some. Trust me. <laughs> right. It goes against all of our instinct, right? Our instinct, which is based on what society taught us. There's not enough, there's not enough. So hold on to what little you have. Have your last meal and die. <laughs> okay? And God says, send Elijah to say, no. Do the opposite. Turn it around. Turn around your procession of death, of limits, of scarcity, and follow the procession of abundance. Share what you have. And the miracle of abundance began. The jar never go empty. <laughs> okay? That's what encountering Christ is about. Now, how does it work in real life? Okay, I work with a lot of churches, so my example has to do with churches. And I over my twenty I just celebrated my twenty-five years priesthood. June first. <laughs> twenty-five years in the priesthood. And have seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I was working with a congregation that was shrinking, like a lot of churches are today, shrinking. And they're down to 20 people, and they still have a beautiful building to maintain. They, you know, everything that they talk about was we don't have enough. We don't have enough money to maintain the building. We don't have enough money to pay the priest. They're down to a, you know, one-third time priest. Still don't have enough money. And I worked with them for a number of months. And one of these meetings I'll never forget, and I, you know, and, and I saw how tired they were. And I asked them, if I were to say to you, let's not continue this church, how many of you will say yes to it? And to my shock, two-thirds of the membership raised their hand. We have enough. We're tired. There's not enough of anything. We're just going to tell the bishop to close the church. I said, well, let's pray about this. So, so I tell them, uh, we leave the meeting, inviting them to pray about this. And so they have made this move. They have got on the procession of death, of not enough, of scarcity. They have admitted it. And so that week, two parishioners were sitting outside of the church, kind of praying that, wow, we might not have this church anymore after all these years. And then they saw some hungry people walking by the church. Hmm. And they look at each other. We have bread in the refrigerator. I have some cold cut in my home. Let me go and bring them. Why don't we make some sandwiches for these hungry people? And they did. Within a the month, they're feeding 50 people every day, five days a week. The church, needless to say, did not die. Okay? At the end of that procession of death, of scarcity, they encounter Christ. And Jesus says, do the opposite. Don't hold on. Just share what you got and let God take care of it, of the rest. And abundant, the miracle of abundance happens. And I travel around the country with talking to churches and every denomination, every local uh, 
Jews, you know, diocese, conferences, synod, are all struggling with money. They're all talking, we don't have enough. And so every denomination is cutting staff after, you know, cutting program. And every local church is cutting staff and cutting program because we don't have enough, therefore we can't do this, we can't do that, including my own diocese and this diocese as well. We are, hate to say it, in the procession of scarcity, heading to a death and rejection. And Jesus said if we are to encounter Jesus and on the way, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus cause us to do? Do the opposite. Share what little you have and begin the miracle of abundance. Do the opposite. Do what your instinct tells you not to do. We witnessed this back in the 80s the, 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 the late 80s, you know, when, when the AIDS epidemic was just beginning and so many uh, in the gay community were dying and we were all in a procession towards that and the world rejected that, rejected us. And what did I see? I see faithful people taking care of each other even while they're sick sharing what little they have and in the process live the abundant in the midst of this tragedy. We know how to do this and we're facing another procession of death these days. How about the Gulf? The oil spilling out of the bottom of the Gulf some 18,000 feet below water. And God didn't do that one. Okay? And everything we hear in the news is about death. The death of the livelihood of the people living in the area who spent all generations relying on the ocean. It, it, the death of the ocean itself. The death of the planet itself. This is how serious this is. Okay? And our society is causing us to do what? Right on that procession. What do we do? We complain. We point finger. It could be his problem. It could be her problem. It could be, you know, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? That's part of that procession. I don't have the answer for that. <laughs> I am simply inviting you to say to yourself, don't get on that procession. Find yourself in the other one, following Jesus. What could that mean, even though we're so far away? Our ocean may not be touched by that. But what can you do that's not part of the procession of death and scarcity, but the procession of abundance, of compassion, of love, that's counter to what our society tells us? The good news is, Jesus has shown us how to do this. In the face of death, what do we do? Our instinct says, run. <laughs> but what did Jesus do? He walked right towards it. The opposite. And in the process, show us that there is a thing called resurrection. And it requires us to be courageous and do the opposite of what we do. What, what, what our instinct tells us. So, as we move forward in our beautiful day, it's getting warm, <laughs> there are a lot of things around us. A lot of things around us that, that, that get us, you know, you know, want to get involved. But I would invite you to follow, to select, to choose the procession that is, that is, following Christ. Amen.